across the board here with Ian the Colonel across the board radio.com. And we always talk about bands that have been around a while, bands that are up and coming, and uh, a lot of bands that are worldwide known, and some that maybe you haven't heard of yet or have gone, cha- gone through changes and are just a completely different band at this point. One of the hottest bands coming up right now, if you haven't heard their back catalog, check it out and definitely listen to the new stuff. We'll talk about that as well. Search the City, great band. We have Trav, the new lead singer, with us right now. Trav, welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, so we, we talked about this. You know, the band's been around since uh, 2006. Uh, really big turnover recently, though. And just last year, I think it was, uh, you were added on vocals, correct? Correct, yeah. I, um, I came into the band around March. Uh, they were looking to find a new singer after Josh parted ways with them for a second time. And um, I was good friends with the drummer of the band, Chris. And he hit me up and was like, hey, how would you feel about trying out? And at first, I thought I had no no chance in hell, and because uh, I was I was a big fan of Search the City back in high school when the uh, Fire So Big came out, mm-hmm. so I, I totally fangirled and uh, got super excited about it. But I was like, you know, what's what's the worst that can happen? I don't get in, right? And uh, at the very least, I can say I got to jam with Search the City, Absolutely. and um, I came out and kind of just headed off, and it all just kind of kind of went up from there. And you know, I know you're pretty young. What about the rest of the band? I, you know, I don't know much about you know the ages and everything like that. Are you a lot younger than them, or? Yeah, I'm. I'm the baby of the group. I'm. A, I'm 22. Right. Jim is 29. Al's 28. Um, Joe's 27, and Chris is 24. Um, so we're all kind of all over the map. But the uh, original members are a little bit older than me. Yeah. <laughs> does that change? How in the writing process, I guess, I know you guys are going to start to work on a new album. I think maybe you've already written some stuff. I know there are two demos out on the Facebook page right now. Uh, you know, do you have different influences? I mean, do you bring kind of a younger sense in, or do you? does everybody listen to the same music? Um, I think we're all pretty much on the same boat, uh, okay. and we all have a few different influences here and there. Like, right. I'm a huge U2 fan, nice. and um, uh, I, I think... Some of my backgrounds are a little bit more ambient and uh, whimsical, if you will, than uh, kind of the pop punky background that they kind of grew up on. But you know, we all we all like the same stuff. There's no like clashing. Uh, I guess I, I would say all of the influences somehow, some way, uh, mesh together and create something that's cohesive. Um, so it all works out. And um, but no, I've never had the feeling once that like age has been a deterring factor in our writing process. And the website is searchthecityband.com. And as I understand, you guys actually lost control of the Facebook site for a while, but now it, it is back to under your control, right? We did. Um, when I joined the band, they were trying to get control of all their domains and whatnot. And actually, the original Search the City domain, uh, they were trying to get a hold of again. And that ended up following through. Uh, we got the Facebook and the MySpace back, but we had to make a new domain.com for ourselves. Um, but once we got that ironed out, everything was, was good from there as oh, far as under our control. Got it, yeah, because the website is searchthecityband.com and the Facebook is facebook.com slash search the city. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so talk about, you know, the new demos are up on the Facebook uh, site and you guys have the, the lyric videos out as well. Love what we've heard from the, the, the two new demos. When can we expect a full new album and what is it going to sound like with with three new members to the band, new vocals, which will obviously be uh, immediately noticeable. What can we expect? Um, you know, I'm really excited about the new album. Uh, we actually might be putting out a new single here within the next couple of weeks, um, maybe even sooner. We've been tracking since October with uh, Nick Sampson, our producer. He's actually um, the guitarist of Abomination, another really prominent Michigan band, and we are really excited to keep this record in Michigan and make it a homegrown record and um, just make it as comfortable of a process as, as possible, um, being that it was something new for a lot of us and it was the first body of work that we have created you know, together as a new unit. So it was really, uh, it was really exciting, and uh, it's, it's all almost done. We're putting the final, final touches on it right now, and um, we're hoping to have it out by late, late April, early May at the, uh, at the latest because we, we don't want to sit on it any longer than we have to because uh, a lot of people are eager to hear it, and we're, we're eager to put it out. So. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that as well. I thought you were going to say, you know, later in the year for maybe a 2014 release, so this is really good to yeah, hear. Yeah, um, we've, been, we've been planning on, uh, I mean, we, we tried to get um, this thing rolling earlier, but we ended up writing a lot longer than we anticipated just because uh, 
the chemistry, once once we all finally came into our own as, as a unit, the best material that we wrote, in my opinion, it was probably in the last couple of weeks of writing before we went to track. So we were like, why why stop now? Why um, short ourselves on the material? So it, it's all really exciting. There's a blend of you know, the old material in there. So people who are coming from a fire so big listening to this record won't be too thrown off by the the changes that we've made. If, if anything, it, it's really at home with uh, the previous record. But I think there's a bit more of a larger array of a palette there to work from as far as genres go. We, we're definitely trying to push the boundaries of our our music and the soundscape that we've created and the past members have created and kind of brings a new element to it. There's a lot of ambience to it. There's some more anthemic songs on there, and there's some more subtle Solo songs. There's even heavier songs in there. There's there's one song nice. that has almost the borderline uh, metal breakdown to it. So it's it's kind of all over the place, but it all somehow fits together, and we're all really excited about it. Nice. I, I like that. Maybe uh, I'm thinking kind of a day to remember type stuff then, where you've got a lot of melody, but also some heavier tracks as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, I, I, if I had to compare it to anything, I'd say um, kind of what Amberlin's been doing recently, okay. on top of maybe uh, throwing in like. Cold play elements, like with with ambience and just really uh, soaring choruses, but yeah, at the same time, like I remember, like there's a couple songs that hit really hard that uh, will definitely be some uh, some face melters. Across the board, talking with Travis, lead vocals from Search the City, new member to the band, really excited. Uh, I know, like you said, you're excited. We're excited to hear everything. When you're in the recording process, and like you said, you're sort of new to the recording process. A lot of times, when we talk to guitarists or bassists or drummers. We'll ask them what they're looking for in the recording process as far as getting their tone or a certain sound on a certain album or certain song. As a vocalist, what do you look for? Do you try to do it in as few takes as possible? Do you need to be in the room on your own? Do you need to be handheld with a mic instead of having it on a stand? What do you look for, or does it not really matter? Um, I, I usually am uh, pretty lax with... Uh my conditions for recording vocals. I can I can track anywhere with with whatever equipment as long as uh, as long as I'm into it and whoever's recording is into it. Mm-hmm. Then it's all it's all gravy. But um, I I really try to get to enunciate the words as clear as possible because sure. I'm one of those guys that you know I'll, I'll love a song and, and sometimes I'll have to really listen to the lyrics and be like what what did he say and sometimes I'll like yep. sing it and my buddies will be like oh did that dude that's totally the wrong lyric like what do you what are you what are you getting at, man? And so I, uh, I try to uh, prevent that from happening to our fans as, uh, as best as I can. And um, but as far as, as this album goes, um, we tried um, doing the whole record with with no hardly any uh, tuning editing as possible. We really wanted to make it as organic as possible, and that that goes for the whole good for you um, the whole rest of the record with uh, the guitars and the drums. Everything was tracked live and. Um, it was real amps or in a real live room, and we really, really wanted to showcase what we could do in as raw um, of a production as possible and do as little um, polishing to it as, as possible because I feel like a lot of records these days um, are just so, so polished and so precise that yeah. it loses some of the humanity in it. It absolutely does. I, I, yeah, if the honesty isn't in the music, it comes out, and that is really... What we've discovered in the, you know, here on this show over the past few years of uh, interviewing bands and just listening to every new track that comes out, that that's the line. You know, when the honesty is there and when people do what they want to do because it's coming from their heart, uh, instead of just trying to overtrack everything and put every trick in the book, it really, really makes a big difference. So it's great that you guys are, are sticking with that as well. Now let me ask you, with your merch, how much control do you guys have over the merchandise, if any? And I, I say that because a lot of people just have you know, normal T-shirts or whatever, but you guys have a, it's, it's a really, really dope Phoenix symbol uh, with Search the City on everything, you know, T-shirts and, and all of uh, sweatshirts, a little bit of everything on Black Gold Society's web store. Do you have any input on that or wh- why the Phoenix? Um, well, the Phoenix kind of represents the rebirth of the band. Right. Phoenix is a, obviously a mythological creature that's, you know, reborn from the ashes of a great fire and um, you know, just kind of ties in with the era the Fire So Big era and being reborn from that. And um, so that's kind of why we decided to go with the Phoenix logo. Um, that's I don't think that's going to be our, our band moniker. It was just kind of something that represented um, this whole coming back process. And Alex, actually, 
Um, he is the one who kind of uh, organizes and coordinates all of the designs um, for all of our merch. He does all of our designs um, himself because he has his own design company, Matching Kerosene, and he's done ah, a lot okay. of design work for a ton of bands. So it's really exciting to be so close to it with him and you know just if we get an idea I'd be like oh you know try this out and I can't imagine the pressure that it puts on him but it, it's great because we don't have to go through like a third party and we can have as much control over it as possible yeah to have so that I, creative control yeah absolutely and um our manager Caleb for Black Old Society we work very very closely with him so that mm-hmm. everything is is pretty much in our control and um just ironed out and done in a way that we're happy with it and so it's it's pretty much 100% in our control um I mean we decided to um, release this record independently from Tooth and Nail um, or any other label, just because we wanted to have complete creative control over it and you know take the time that it needed and that it deserved and really do it on our terms and uh, the way we wanted to. So that's really refreshing for me um, coming into this band after they've been on a label, just because I've never I've been in other bands, but I was never in a band um, with the status that they had or any label um, experience either. So for, for them to say, you know, we don't we don't need label, we, we can do this ourselves and, and make it our own and be really proud of it, that, that was really refreshing to me, especially in an era where um, I feel like labels are so quick to cash in on things that they think will make them a quick buck but not really have any longevity to it and really try to... Um, make it about the passion again. So that's that's what I'm really excited about. And a lot of bands have been going the route that you did on this, you know, whether they already had a label or they just have never, you know, been signed or don't believe in signing with a label. But, you know, going with the, either a Kickstarter campaign or, or one of those things. And you guys did this on the website, which, again, search the city band. Dot com. Uh, like I'm looking at one entry where you can make a $30 donation. Now, a lot of times people ask for $100, $150, something like that. But for only 30 bucks, you actually sent people, or I, I guess are still sending them maybe, um, the Phoenix T-shirt. Um, everybody who contributed is actually going to have their name on the back of the shirt. And if you donate, again, just 30 bucks, you get your, names, your name in the credits of the record. That's incredible. I mean, for only 30 bucks, that's amazing. But talk about... You said there's a lot of freedom in that. Is it also very stressful, though, not knowing where the next dollar, recording dollar, is going to come from? It's um, it's a little, it's a little stressful. At first, when we launched it, we were we weren't really sure how it was going to work out because we didn't want to go through Kickstarter. Um, we were just kind of going with the whole mindset we wanted to make it our own and have control. Right. Over it. We decided to do a fundraiser independently of any other fundraising site and just do it through our own web store. And um, yeah, it was it was a big challenge coming up with um, reward prizes. Um, that made sense to us and also were intriguing for fans, too, because um, we really wanted something that was personal and um, as hands-on as, uh, uh, I guess, kind of uh, cohesive with the album. I I actually came up with the idea of um, having the names of all the contributors on the back of the shirt because I thought that would be really, really cool. And so we actually haven't sent out any of those yet because we're going to start manufacturing them uh, after the fundraiser is over, so we can have a complete, uh, comprehensive list of all the names, and they'll probably all be uh, in like some sort of a flame in the back, like all the TypeScript and stuff. So it's, it's going to be it's going to be really cool. I'm really I'm really excited with the route that we uh, that we took with this. I'm glad we stuck to our creative guns, even though it's it's been kind of uh, scary at times. I think um, I think we're coming out of this with um, you know it, it looks like right now we've raised uh, on the side. I know it says. I think just over three grand, but I think we have a little closer to four now, and we we paid off. But, but you, a don't, good chunk you don't tell of the people album. that. You've got to keep it quiet. You know, we only have 150 bucks. We need more money. Yeah, it's um, we're uh, well, I mean, we we wanted to show how how far along we were with our progress mm-hmm. too. Yeah, yeah, um, so kidding. we we update it like weekly, um, just so kids can say, oh, you know, I, I can I'm I could be the one that can push them, yep. you know, that much farther. And uh, so I mean, we're not quite there yet. So anyone out there listening uh, who wants to contribute, please, please do. <laughs> but um, I'm 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 confident that we can pull through at this point, uh, even if we don't make our goal. But if, if if we do make our goal, that would be great because that just leaves that much more room for further things that we can do with with pressing. And, and we we're talking about doing a limited final pressing. So it's it's all it's all up in the air, and it's uh, it's exciting, but it is stressful and uh, a little scary and a little daunting. But um, it's it's really rewarding too. 
across the board here with Travis from Search the City. Uh, what for new fans of the band, as well as old fans that have been around since the beginning? After a show, they come up and talk to you. What is the the most impactful? What do you want them to say? What do you want to hear? What what'll make you feel like, hey, we're doing a great job here? You know, this this is my dream. If as as a, a listener myself and as a frequent show goer, I, I wanna be moved by the experience. Like I I can't stand it when I go to shows these days and people are just standing around and you know, just kind of um sleepwalking through the whole like <laughs> music show process, yeah. the whole rock show. And it's it really it just bums me out because um I feel like if you if you pay money, hard earned money to go to a rock show, you should walk away you know, feeling exhilarated and knowing that you just rocked out and jumped around and screamed your lungs out and just and just truly felt freed. So I guess the best compliment to me um, would be someone saying, you know, your show really affected me. Um, even even if it's not on a very deeper, you know, spiritual level. Even if it's just, you know, I had a great time. I, I let loose with my friends. You know, we, we drove a long way and. And came out and had had a great time and just like let loose. Like if if you can just lose yourself in the music and just forget about the outside world for that hour that you're there, then that's that's all I could ever ask for um, for a showgoer. And uh, actually, it's uh, it's funny because the show that we had as our comeback show, my very first show with them uh, in Pontiac, there was a a couple who came up to me after the show, and they had driven all the way from, I think, Tennessee. And uh, they they had been longtime fans of the band, like, well, since Josh was in the band. And they came up to me and they said, you know, I really appreciate... There was, there was a guy that was wearing a shirt um, with, like, a... Um, just, like, a taped-on piece of computer paper that said Josh Who. And I'm not sure if he <laughs> meant it sarcastically or not, but um, I it fell off and someone handed it to me, and I read it out loud. And um, to, to the crowd, and there was, you know, huge, huge applause. And I was like, well, hold, hold on a second. Like, I'm not, I'm not Josh Cross. I'm Travis Bobier. We're Search the City, and I would never do anything to, um, you know, tarnish, tarnish that name or his name. And, uh, and those two people that I was talking to were saying, you know, that was really, really something special that you said that because it kind of makes the legacy of Search the City no longer about, you know, any previous incarnation of the band, it's right. just about Search the City and about the music. And that's really what I want kids to take away from this. You know, the music of Search the City, not of, of Josh Frost or any individual member of the band, but just about the band as a unit from this era to this era, you know. If you only, if you knew you only had time in your life, now whatever this is, five minutes, 30 minutes, uh, to listen to one more song. Now, you can listen to it or you can perform it, yours or anybody else's. What's the last song that you want to hear in your life? Yikes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Take your time. Jeez. Um, can I give a listen and perform? Sure. All right. Uh, if I had to perform one last song ever, it would probably be Son of a Gun, which was the very first song that I heard from Search the City uh, back in high school. My, okay. my buddy... Uh, who I was, who I played in, within bands uh, with all throughout high school, showed me them. I was like, "Hey, there's this, uh, you know, band who is just like really picking up some some heat in, in Michigan. They're they're really good. You check them out." And that was the first song I heard, and it just made me so so proud and so excited to be part of the Michigan music scene. And, um, and that was awful. kind of the song that really uh, got that's... me into into Search the City. So that would be the song that uh, that I would want to perform. And last. that's kind of off the seminal album as well. You know, a fire so big the heavens can see. Yes, um, I mean I, I haven't really had the experience of playing many of the new songs that I've yet, so maybe maybe that'll change once once that happens. But um, as of right now, I'd say "Son of a Gun." Okay. Um, as far as listening to, I'd probably say um, if I had one one last song to listen to, it'd probably be "Running to Stand Still" by U2 from uh, their their greatest album, in my opinion, "The Joshua, Joshua Tree." Tree for it's, sure. Yeah. It's, it's just a song that you know it's about couple of runaways who are trying to to beat um you know their demons and and find peace and that that song is just is just so poetic and beautiful and it's so simple too it's, it's almost it's like two chords on an acoustic guitar and it's uh it's but it's so it's so powerful and it's almost like a whisper but it's beautiful it's so 
so deeply to me. That would probably be the last song if I ever had to hear one. You know, that brings up one last question. Uh, that is obviously because of the content of the album, Joshua Tree, that is one of the greatest albums of all time. But it's also just yeah, the cherry on the top of that album is that it starts with Where the Streets Have No Name, and it has that kind of crescendo that it, it just gets louder and, and builds up. That makes all the difference in the world, and if that was track two or track three or the last track, it, it wouldn't be nearly the same. Do you, guys, no, absolutely. do you guys consider track placement a lot, or is that more your producer that does that, Caleb, or absolutely. whatever? Absolutely. Um, I uh, we've, we've been coming up with a track list thing for the last couple of weeks and really trying to figure out where everything makes sense. And we have a song that's... Uh, kind of in the same vein of where the streets of no name actually it's very um that's what i like to hear very very groovy and has some really really great powerful build-ups into just these really bright and um powerful choruses and um but we are, we're very conscious of, of track placement because you know the first track that you put on an album sets, sets the tone inevitably for the rest of the record so you have to be very careful with what you put out there first um because you know media phobes, well not phobes, media fights I should say, well, uh, <laughs> that really want to digress and ingest an album, we'll listen to it from front to back as opposed to some people who would just be like, oh, I want to listen to this song and not yeah. really care about the track listing, but for someone <laughs> who's listening to it as a true lover of, of music and you know, here's, here's the first track and if they're put off by that, then they just kind of have this humdrum glum uh, you know, thought about the whole rest of the record and it's like, oh, Man, and you know, sometimes that can be turned around, but you never want to start a record out on the wrong foot. And with the right. case of the Joshua Tree, they they nailed it with, with that song. So I, I hope that that we make uh, the right decision with um with our track placement because it, it it truly does have an effect on the whole experience of listening to that album. Absolutely, it, it, yeah, it totally does. So yeah, I'm glad you guys are keeping that in mind. See, that's why you guys have been successful as a band and in your other projects, and will continue to be successful with this new album because you're doing the right things for the right reasons. So we appreciate that. And I know uh, Caleb, you know, your manager's a, a great guy as well. So everybody's, uh, you have, you surrounded yourself with a good group of people. So uh, we wish you guys the best of luck. And again, search the city band.com is the out as the website. And you can find all of the proper uh, social websites from there as well. And uh, again, Travis, we really appreciate the time, man. We we'll back here in a few minutes on across the board with Ian, the Colonel here on across the board radio.com.